So, you know, just talking in general about CRM, since I don't know who knows what, we'll just kind of go through a short set of slides and talk about that and then creatively talk about how that works in Drupal. And kind of the whole uh, idea of this, this talk is that there's a whole lot of CRMs out there and have a billion trillion features and how that works with Drupal. Uh, generally, customer relationship management is really to manage your leads, customers, prospects. Somehow, basically keep your contacts in a place where you can get them or your accountant can get them or somebody can get to them. Uh, see what they've ordered, bought, interested in. Support that person and then maybe even generate some lead emails and stuff like that out to them, right? That's basically what it's about. There's a lot of complexity around that. Some of the common issues that you see in CRMs are, you know, a complexity product. So everybody that says, oh, I, I need a CRM because I don't have any way to keep track of all these people, what they're doing, you know, maybe what I've sold them on, keep track of my support team. Uh, there's lots of stuff going on there. And then there's really variable needs, which shows in the CRM market, if you just Google CRM, there's a billion of them. And there's some for, uh, like, point of service sales. There's some for... Uh, companies that need very large customer support, you know, such as like a DHL, they have a giant help desk system that you'd have to go into built by HP that's, you know, a trillion bucks. Uh, there's a handful of security issues and permissions that you're probably looking at in small term, but as a big, large corporate, you're looking at, you know, who gets to do what, who can't export these out, who cannot, you know, because you have this, this customer base that you need to keep a hold of. If uh, one salesperson can just download all your leads and then steal them and then go work for your competitor, you have a security risk there that needs to be mitigated. The permissions of what, who gets to see what fields is super important in the CRM, even more so than generally your website. Uh, and then different needs per department. You know, the, the bigger this company is or the bigger your company is, you're going to have, uh, you know, start off with just, I need to get the customer's information and their address and, and their login name and maybe record a bunch of fields of what's happened today in there uh, with maybe a support team. Uh, the bigger ones, you're going to have a marketing team that needs to know which emails got sent to which customers, and then you're going to have a sales team that's going to need to know which emails got sent to which customers, and then how often they've been followed up on and who's done what. And then you're going to end up with a support team in the long run that, that needs to record each one of their pieces in there and how long it took and if the customer was satisfied. So that overall you get a great view of that customer when you come in. That's all CRM it really is about, right? And so um, I just pointed out some of the general CRM systems that are available. And anybody that's done development with any company has probably connected to Salesforce on Drupal at least a billion times. Uh, some of the other ones that we run into is Microsoft CRM is now called Microsoft Dynamics, I think, and uh, it's version 5. Sugar CRM and Bfiger are both open source. And... Uh, well, I take that back. Sugar CRM has an open source version. They used to be all open source, and they now are commercial based. And if you pluck around their site a little bit, there's a hidden open source community, and you can download it now. Uh, same with VTiger is open source, and they have a whole bunch of work and options and things you can do. Primarily, a lot of these are well put together. If you have a sales force that really needs to uh, go out and get a bunch of leads that have no reference to you other than they might be interested in your product and slam them into the system and then take them through this uh, architecture to try to get them to become customers. And that works in a very traditional manner. But a lot of us are, we're all working web where your leads typically come off the site and that's how your site grows. You don't necessarily go grab a chunk of people and just try to generate a, a sale of a product out from that CRM. Uh, act content management systems on here just as something we see a lot. There's a lot of people that have apt that they've been using for contact management. It's not necessarily a CRM, um, but it's it's more of just a contact database. You know, the earlier act was just about creating basically a way to take your shoebox full of business cards and putting them in the computer back in like 91 or something like that. And it's slowly grown out. It's a lot more mature of a product than some of these, but doesn't have nearly the features as the top ones. And then I put this link in here to kind of just show the overall uh, insanity of how many CRMs there really are uh, on Wikipedia, right? And this is actually a really good resource if you want to 
uh, weigh out features with a client or just with yourself on if any of these make sense for you. You know, it's going to tell you what database they run on. What you know, so you can really break this down and you can say, you know, why you're why are you on sugar? Probably because it works on the same platform as Drupal and it's open source. I've also used actually MediaWiki. Right. Made a CRM out of that. Right. So. Uh, you can narrow it down to exactly what your client might be looking for. If you weren't working on a Drupal project, you know, and you were working on a Microsoft SQL, ASP.NET, you may end up picking one of these and doing some, some research on it. Uh, so there's a whole lot of options out there. One of the things we've been doing for some of our um, less large clients, because we wouldn't want to necessarily build a CRM for, say, DHL, right, on, uh, just on the fly, if there's a product out there that might do it unless they have some incredible budget that they'd love to just try out a CRM and build their own, uh, is, you know, building, a, building Drupal into a CRM or extending their Drupal platform on their website into the additional CRM for them. And when I talk about that, uh, we talk about, you know, what, is that, what do you really need in your CRM? You know, do you need every single feature that's in a lot of these more mature CRM systems? Uh, typically not. You, if you install Sugar CRM, there's probably about 7,000 options you don't necessarily need. And so maybe it needs to be a lot more simple. And that kind of benefits you in two ways. One, if you're already teaching the client Drupal in general, teaching them a little more Drupal wouldn't be that bad versus teaching them two systems. So, you, so if you're going in and you're teaching Drupal, and then next up you're going to say, and I integrated this with Salesforce. Let me teach you Salesforce. Right now, just as much as probably you guys are going to start glossing over in 30 minutes and dreaming about the anteater pub, you know, there's going to be, you know, that gloss over of the client. And they're going to say, I don't want to learn two systems. I just want to do this one. Uh, actually, I'll show you the K-pop site in a second as a good example of what that might be really good for. Uh, you know, site's already on Drupal. If you just need really more contact management and to know what that user's doing, and you have an e-commerce site, integrated. You have their user, you have their location, you have every order on the system. What you know? What else do you need other than to add some a content type to keep track of maybe support or customer service problems? You know, uh, instead of working with a lot of the time where we lose a lot of this person's information in a CRM. So if we connect into Salesforce, for example, a lot of the time, even though we we connect in like what the username is and what all this stuff is. It's a lot of work to, to get statistics out of the Drupal and to put all that over into Salesforce in a way that makes sense for the person. So when we connect up with, with, with anything really in, in a CRM system, we're going to miss some data that may become super important at the end of this whole project that you're working on or six months later when they really want to see this person's analytics on the site or statistics. That's stuff that would be a lot easier to store on the site that already exists that's doing this work for that uh, specific client. Uh, you know, Drupal has flexible content types. Uh, if you look at a lot of these CRM systems, if you wanted to add a field to something, it's about a 7,000 step process, and then you don't necessarily know uh, how permissions restricted that field is, what's happened to it, where you do in Drupal. You know exactly what's going on there. You can go and you can see it because you've already got that same process in mind. You, you didn't have to learn how Salesforce permits you to show fields or hide fields for that client. Uh, you know, fifth off, we have basically rules and triggers using the rules module. You guys all know rules, rules module. For those that don't, it basically puts things in place to say, when this happens, do this. Is that about 80% of what a, a system like a CRM needs to do is convert people into different customers or do things like that, your rules module could do most of that for you. Uh, and then we have, you know, very specific CCK field like permissions and, and role-based permissions that we can use in a Drupal system to limit down those fields to those people that, that need to see them. So as a salesperson may not need to see all the support issues, or maybe they do, you could turn that on and off on the fly on that Drupal system. So. Uh, you know, some potential hazards with just Drupal in general is one is your, you know, misconfiguration in general might be a big problem because if the client that logs into your site and buys, you know, apple pies every day, 
if you accidentally or the client accidentally hit some switches, that user data might appear, right? And the last thing you want to do is show uh, that kid that you paid out of high school support writing in some nasty customer service note in there and having it come out from the client into that customer space. You know, that's a serious uh, marketing problem that could happen. Security and changes. You know, Drupal's always got the update notice going on. Something may change where that private data may come off. That's where a benefit of maybe using a separate CRM system may make sense. Is if there is something, you know, social security number or something so drastic that you don't want somebody to get a hold of it, and it does go through their system and somebody could hack it or something like that, you may want to leverage that uh, liability on something like Salesforce, a hosted solution that can get sued instead of you, right? Because part of this is when you're building a client system is that you're always at risk as, as having that liability come back to you. Um, performance, you add a trillion fields and all this stuff going on, all of a sudden the site's slow as hell and the customer doesn't know, but it's loading all this crazy information in. Depending on how you've got that set up, it might be a problem. Um, maybe on the user, t user uh, loading at some point. And then just user contamination. So uh, part of what I'm proposing here is that you let them do the work. Like, you know, one of the main ideas of the internet and IT in general is to get everybody else to do work for it, right? Like you don't want to have to have them mail you a piece of paper telling you the address changes. You just want that in there. Um, typically in a setup where you're just installing Drupal and you've got, you know, locations in the user table and the profile and they can put them in, they could change those at any time and unless you're really tracking the revisions back, somebody may come and basically white out their user information and leave you with nothing. So if you really needed that information, now you're syncing that across and that could happen really with any CRM, but basically you're, you're at risk if you're not tracking the revisions that may happen at this point. And uh, so kind of talking about building a CRM in Drupal, here's the kind of main ideas that, that would take effect. It's one, you've got to identify your user roles, not necessarily only right now most people build user roles. They build, uh, you know, an admin role, a content editor role, somebody with less permissions, and then maybe another one. And uh, on the customer side, there's typically you know, anonymous and authenticated. Well, you're going to maybe need some other roles. Or you may also want to change uh, people between different access points. So not only in user roles, you could do maybe a lead type or a customer type or a, you know, expired customer or whatever you wanted to do. If there were certain attributes you wanted them to be able to access based on a user role, you could do it there. But you may need to also extend the roles out to uh, types of people in the CRM. So somebody may be uh, maybe not even a content editor. Maybe they have no uh, need to edit the website, but they need to come in and edit people's users. So you may need to add like a CRM user and maybe like a sales team user and build that out. And then in content types, if you went in and created a uh, lead content type, which I'll kind of pick up the site and show you. So, let me go in here. And I'll show you this site a little bit more in detail in a second. But, so, you know, if you came in and you create some content types, you may have, you know, a specific company type of content. So you have this kind of general idea in a CRM that has what? a lead or a customer is coming in, that, that person's a member of a company. That's basically the main things you need to keep a hold of. That can be done by either creating like a content type of a company and a, and a content type of maybe lead or person, or that could be used on the profile. Uh, next up, you need to connect those using like a node reference or an organic group. Um, third off into that, you need something, I mean, you're tracking something in a CRM. So you have a project or a sale or something. So you build content types out for those and maybe add some fields. Additional to that, you're going to have to identify which permissions to what fields that person gets to see as much as 
you get to see. And you may need to build some custom uh, entry forms for things like that that you need to store that they don't get to see again uh, or edit, right, that you can go in and, and save in the node or the profile. And then you're going to have to build out some rules. So when somebody buys something, you may want to change a taxonomy on their profile from a lead to a customer or a... Uh, you know, a client to a canceled client. You're going to need some triggers that, that create this stuff in there. And if you haven't used the rules module, let me show you what that is like. Let's see what's on here. So, um, basically... in there necessarily. But basically you can take um, when this person does this, like if I buy this product, trigger off an email and send it off thanking them for an email. I'm going to pull up the site. Okay, pop site just because it looks delicious. So just if uh, somebody came in and was really hungry and wanted some cake pops and they bought one or a thousand, Let's give it a second to load up. You know, we're going to need rules to go into place, uh, just similar to these conditional actions on this. That when somebody buys something, something else is going to have to happen. It's a little slow in here. Okay, so similar at, similar in, in process. Basically, you know, email a notification of this, do this. You might even add rules for, yeah, go ahead. I was going to have a question. Uh, if any reason, have you ever added a little like, uh, used to CCRM as a triple module? City CRM? Yeah. yeah, we have. Um, I, I was kind of poking around. There's a, there's a lot of initiatives in Drupal that... Uh, or either somebody trying to create like a CRM module or using Civi CRM or Sugar CRM and integrating. And uh, yeah, I've, I've done that too. Uh, this primarily, I just want to kind of go over like a very simple use case where you have maybe a team of 10 and you need to manage the people that are coming in and, and running your site and maybe you do an e-commerce site or maybe everybody is in some sort of system that logs into your site that you can manage these customers. Uh, through that one site instead of building out a, a connection to a secondary site. But do you have any questions about CBCRM? Or? No, because uh, no, CBCRM, it's, it's a Drupal module, but it's not really a module. Right. It still kind of keeps you within Drupal, even though it does its own templating magic and stuff. So I right. Know. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, that's a good way of going. Every time I've looked at CBCRM, though, it's not necessarily what my clients need. I, I, I had a non I wanted to use it. I found it very kludgy and and sort of overbearing if, if, if that's a word you can apply to something like that. And it, it wasn't really a module. It's like a, it, it's almost a module and then it's this thing. Yeah. I think it's good for what they started out doing with it in terms of specific nonprofit processes. But uh, and then a lot of our clients that are in the smaller end, even installing sugar CRM is just like I don't need any of that. I don't need sales you know, members to come in and email through this system and then send it out. I just need the people's information in a basically a view that you can build on your website, and I need it to send out emails when I need it to. And so basically, if you do views right and CCK fields right and, and content types right, you can just build what you would like. And if that doesn't work, erase it. You know, that's the nice thing about a CRM or a CMS. And so, and then in here, uh, similar system, this is conditional actions, but basically you can say, well, when somebody does this, send them an email. Send me an email. You could even have it when somebody logs into site, send me a text telling me that so-and-so, the giant lead I was looking for, is on my website right now. And so I can follow up creepily in 20 minutes, you know. <laughs> and so, and there's a lot of people out there that do that 
through other CRMs and other things and analysis, looking at you on their site, know who you are, uh, tracking you through cookies or whatever. So that can be very well done in Drupal. You don't have to go to a secondary site. Uh, let me pull up this. So basically, yeah, statistics analysis, you could do uh, anything with tracking a person's paths they're going through to how many products they've ordered, what they've looked at in order. So you could be uh, like Amazon and just say, well, this person was on this page for X amount of time. You could program that in really easily and just record that in a field. And all that can be done right in Drupal just with, with standard information. Uh, and then there's a couple ways of really doing groups and things like that. Really, you build either, uh, you can use organic groups, which sometimes is really confusing to people, or you can use node references to say, um, this person is part of this company and reference that person in. And so I'm going to kind of show you a couple of our uh, CRM-like based products that I would have the opportunity of showing you without giving away somebody's top secret stuff. So Ubiquity Public Relations needed a place to just store what's going on. They Basically, if you don't know what a PR firm does, they basically annoy people until they post your story. <laughs> right, that's all it is. It's really an annoyance until you're like, fine, that's a great story. I need something to write about. Here it is. Uh, so, uh, so a friend of mine, Allie, she does uh, a lot of campaigns for good friends of mine. Very good PR firm, and they uh, needed a place to add their clients, what campaigns their clients have, uh, the impressions coming in, and then those media contacts that they're spamming, basically. So, if you see at the top here. This is the back of their site that has, you know, clients. This is all stuff the customer can't see. But although um, coming soon, the client will be able to see their campaigns and results, but not all the other stuff that's in the system. So we can extend this out so on the front side of the site, they can actually see, oh, uh, they must have done some work today, you know. So I'm going to take you over to clients. As a client, and I'll just grab this one. You know, I'll just hit edit so you can see all the fields that are in here. When I create a client, you know, as a name, just like anything else, uh, maybe they want to keep track of the website and primary email contact. And then we have these node references down here. These references are the client's contacts. So just like you would in a regular CRM, I could come in here and create one, add a person to this listing of people that are in this company, what is this company called? Easy Energy Systems. Or I could look up somebody that maybe switched companies or maybe logged in on the front side and doesn't, isn't related to something, and pick that person and save them out. Right, and go ahead and add as many people as I want. Uh, I could add some notes about what's going on. They've got all these different links to things that might, that might be happening. And then as a regular user, We've permissioned them out so they don't see any of the extra crazy stuff that comes in Drupal, right? All this stuff down here that's too much for people. So we've gotten rid of that. So they come in, they hit save. They get a dashboard of stuff that we put on the page. Uh, this is different per person and has different uh, things going on. Now we've got a node reference to the, the people in the firm. And we've got uh, each different campaign that's going on for them. So for them, it's great to track, but this could be just as much uh, a campaign of you going to sell things or going to do something uh, for a, a lead or a customer you already have. It could be the Cake Pops company I just pulled up, and somebody might have bought something. It rolls up in here, right? And you could track how many things they've sold and what's gone on, and you can make really easy ad forms and stuff like that. So just by using node references... We can connect all this information and then build simple views. Um, everybody's familiar with views. That's like extra 10 hours of discussion. But basically, you can build out these very focused forms in about five, six pages of this. This is probably all your client really needs, right? If they need more, they can come back to you anyway. So a win-win. Uh, instead of asking you, is there a plug-in for sugar that does some magical process that you don't know how to program or have to learn how Sugar builds modules. Uh, you already know how this works, so you may as well leverage this. Um, yeah? Uh, two questions. Um, the first one is with security, which you talked about earlier. 
Have you done anything with limiting where a employee can log on to the system? For example, like you can only access it if they're on the office subnet or something. Yeah, you can. Um, that I think comes by default, if I'm not you can mistaken. Do I think blocking, I think, by default. You can do access rules here, and you can actually do by domain. I mean, so you can allow or deny here, uh, depending on username, email, host. You can do a lot there, but you can also do on custom module, you know, specific blocking. One thing to also look at in terms of security, there's a module. I think it's just called security. Let me look really quickly. But we put it on basically everything. Uh, if I can, there it is. Login security is what it's called. Login security is should be on every one of your sites. Basically, it's it's not heavy, and if you care about people bashing your Drupal site and getting in to Sarah Palin's email, you need to put this on your site and configure it to slow people down, make it hard for them to log in, and block people out if you care. So, uh, you know, it tracks how many logins per hour, uh, increases delay, so it starts slowing it down. So the reason you do that is that if there's uh, like an automated system, you write a script and you tell it to hammer that site, that it only responds back. It's slower and slower and slower the longer it takes them to log in until it's just unbearable. So that that basically blows itself up and stops working. There's no D7. Right. Yeah, not yet. Is there a dev on that? Check out flood control. No. I think it's flood control, yeah. They posted a dev for six uh, a month ago. Hmm. But there hasn't been a, a, a commit in 45 weeks. You have to get that flood control. Yeah. Look up flood control. If you, if you try and hammer into a site like five or six times within a certain time frame, you I'm get not, locked out. Right, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about how to limit an employee so an employee can only log into this system in the office. I well, don't want someone to go home and have their brother or their sister or whatever log in or to control access into the CR. So for that specifically, you'd want to create probably a custom uh, rule, basically in a module, that blocks those specific user roles, probably role-based, right, to only being able to access it from, uh, if you have a specific static IP or IPs, that you'd allow them through. Yeah. Yeah. You, I was going to say you do it outside of the Well, there's, there's two sides of that, though, because if... Right. I would probably do it in a module if I was you because uh, the way I'm talking about this, at least, is if you had a front end site that maybe they can log into certain things and a back end site where there's maybe specific stuff they can get to and it's the same login right. that you're going to want to put access controls on the back end and, we and that information. Type, so we don't want to block with everybody. There's a module called Restrict IP that has a 7 RC2 version. Yeah, then that may work for that, but if you have very specific uh, paths or areas that you don't want them to access externally or from home or something like that, you could do that that way, where you just uh, basically write a module on user login and check uh, or node access. Yeah, Apache probably might be the best, or uh, it, it really depends on the on the use case. But you could do, it, and I would probably just end up rolling in a module. It would be pretty quick and easy. Um, yeah, because that is one one concern on any CRM really is who's getting to this, and then what are they doing with it? Because every salesperson that you have is only as good as their interest in your company. Next company, I mean, they basically go through and recycle the same process through a handful of different companies. If they're going through the same sales process, selling the same product, it's not like they go from selling tires one day to selling Oracle databases, right? So they may want to come rip your list here and put it out. And there's really not a lot, you know, in all honesty, stopping anyone from doing that anywhere if they have the determination to do it and their job is to get you those people and call them, right? They could just have pay somebody in India to log in or something and steal all your stuff while they're in at work or who knows. I mean, there's, there's ways around everything. But uh, you just have to be very, ob you know, obvious of what you're allowing people to do. And put those permissions in place when you set any CRM up. This is not a, a separate case from setting up a Salesforce where you need to lock them into where they need to go. And again, the, the second question, not related to the first, deals a little bit of like 
we're, we're doing you know sales. So we have inquiry forms on our site, and the inquiry form generates the leads. And in many cases, those are fresh leads, so the user is not in any type of database. Right. So we want to have that lead generate in, but then we want to track it as part of the sales forecasting tool. We can actually see potential revenue reports, et cetera. Right. Um, have you been able to accomplish things like that using Core? Yeah, or so basically what we'll do is we'll build a node type, kind of like a profile node, uh -huh. that then we reattach via like the email address for later. So when that actually becomes a user or customer, that you could put that attachment, just like we were talking with node referencing, you can reference that back, and then that becomes that person's profile at that point. So uh, you can collect all that data up front, store it for later, when they actually become that customer, roll it in, otherwise count as a lead. And if you use that same data set as the profile generically, then it's agnostic. So once they become a customer, that information travels with them. That, that part I, I think is pretty clear. The, the part that I'm asking about is like the salesperson will generate quotations. Right. There may be n number of quotations that are generated depending upon communications sure. and our sales cycle. So ideally, you know, we, we have a five-step sales process. So we want that salesperson able to track that sale so that a manager can just press a button and see what's in the pipeline for each individual salesperson that they're responsible for. Yeah. And then how much revenue are they representing in terms of... So you're looking at forecasting sheets and... Exactly. and yeah, so you can do that. And a lot of that is going to either become part of views uh -huh. and some uh, connections to graphing, typically. Uh -huh. Uh, but a lot of that's views and then programming out uh, typically summary data of, of the estimates or the fields. And I can show you uh, kind of what, I can't remember the name of the module off the top of my head today, but the graph, like on this company's support. And if you haven't used the support module, I think this is just support directly, but it uses the same uh, graphing engine as you most likely see on other Drupal sites. Uh, but you can build out things that look similar to, uh, you know, tickets and open tickets and what's going on. And, you know, you could build these actually really easily in the Drupal system. And we do this a lot. Actually, I was going to show you some of that in uh, this bank software, which I will show you here in a second. Yeah. So let me show you that. Um, we have our own project system as well, but this is in Drupal. So uh, this is a, a bank system for AT Financial Advisors. It, it has a uh, proposal creation system for their salespeople and agents to create proposals based on people's financial data. It connects to all the banking systems, so we can put things out here. And this is my test account to show different stuff. The, you know, the growth, the number of accounts in each of these sections, the graphing. You can do this in Drupal. This is not... Well, what's the investment of time to generate this, this particular site? It would depend. This one in time. Uh, notably, I have some seriously awesome development staff. Uh, probably you specialize in this, it seems. Right. A couple hundred hours, maybe. Which, on a more general person developing it, Seven, eight hundred hours, I bet, for what's in here. This is a fairly extensive site. Um, what are you using for that chart? Uh, that is, yeah. we were using uh, just flop. Flop. We were using just flop. I think uh, Patrick may have installed a different four pay graphing system. But if you haven't used flop, that's how a lot of these HTML5 based graphs are being built. Fusion charts work. At first, we didn't really like Splash Chase, but then we, once we figured out the server side, it exports it. Right. It really nice and there's and actually nice Google one. Charts, too. The yeah. reason we didn't use Google Charts for that is it's financial data, and I'd have to give it to Google to give me a chart. And that would be a very bad security hole, right? Because <laughs> uh, somebody could figure that out and then steal people's data. Uh, yeah, but Flot actually is really neat. And allows you to do some pretty cool graphs. Uh, let's see. So it's hosted on Google Code, but it's not. Well, Flot specifically, I think, is hosted on Google Code, but. Um, but it's not. Really, really, really 
it's no, it's just an open source product. And I think there's a module for this that you can graph off of. But if not, I think it's a very it's a very simple include. And so you can build really cool graphs with it. Um, one of the reasons we didn't, I think we switched off of Flop for this, and it's a proprietary graphing module, is that uh, for these guys, uh, it's a financial agent going out and selling people like what retirement accounts and stuff. They need printouts. And so if you do it in Flash or you do it in like HTML5, there's a lot of time where those won't print out that nice, and you'll need to find a different graphing module to do that if those, if you want a PDF, basically, because we need to draw an image of that out. Uh, one of the things people have used since the beginning of PHP time is JP graph. It makes pretty good graphs, although they're really ugly. And so uh, I think it's like, it's a proprietary thing too. I think it's like a hundred bucks. We were actually able to export the JPEG of the Fusion Chart to server side, save it out, and then Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So basically, you have to fall back an image in there, and that takes some work and time for it to actually render. Is Flop using SVG or JavaScript? Uh, JavaScript. Actually, it might still be using SVG. For a while, I think most things were using SVG in that Flop kind of HTML5 canvassing of graphs. But in either case, um, this is a not necessarily a CRM, but it's a very complex system to kind of prove the point that you can do whatever you want. Uh, and you can build really crazy stuff. Some of these are contributed modules, like this is Homebox. Um, so they can build their own dashboards, and we can contribute and have different users logging in, doing different things. They can have their own, you know, like here we've got some proposals that we've just made up for an example here. Uh, you know, and going through this process, we've got you know, graphing and things, and this is all for like one client. They could come in and see this proposal, see that money and the graphing stuff. So similar to what you're looking at doing in terms of building a forecast, you could do this actually. It doesn't take as much as this looks like it takes to do. Uh, built off the same Drupal information, and all this stuff generically is content type based. It's not like we just started creating our own uh, fields and tables in the database. The only thing that's not uh, part of Drupal core is the actual bank data that's being pushed out to us. We're actually synchronizing that, and that data comes in in whatever crazy format they want, and it stays in that format because it can change, and their systems can change, and we need to be flexible to that. We're not trying to transfer that into a Drupal content type or something. That would probably kill the system, and it would be a lot to maintain. Have you done anything with D7 or everything you're working on with D6? No, we have D7 as well. Uh, some some of the bigger, heavier stuff is obviously not going to come off of D6 for a while, uh, or you know, two versions back because uh, upgrade path will be pretty heavy, and it's not my choice if I get to upgrade that or not. Sometimes you know, client gets to pay for it, so I'm not going to volunteer our time to do it if I don't have to. Earlier, you mentioned ticketing. I'm wondering what you Oh, this one back here. Uh, this is actually a pretty good. Module called support. I'm just going to look so I don't lie to you. This is an older site, I believe, and it has, uh, they were using Zendesk, and then they said, we don't like Zendesk. What do you have? And I said, well, how about we just try support? And somewhere in here. I can mess it up. has a lot of things with support in their description, I guess. Yeah, it's just called support. Uh, it's a simple setup. You could do all that yourself without having to do it, but it, why do the work yourself if somebody already did it? Um, where you can come in, look at different clients, uh, set up different users to get triggered using the rules system to get the tickets and respond to them and get emails and all that stuff. So it's actually pretty simple to set up, and I would give it a shot if you're using a support system. Yeah. What you got? Is it, is it, is it okay to ask kind of a general question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, forgive me for being late, but I'm glad I kicked out here anyway. And, uh, I'm wondering if you're familiar with if there's a, a general software uh, like CRM that's 
used for uh, credit unions for accounting fraud, like that, creating financial accounting, or is that, do you think you, do you know if there is, or do you think there might just be like they just pay their own developers and developers? So you're talking like a, for a credit union to do uh, general accounting and account management, or is it just accounting data? Like yeah, what you... general, general management of accounts. Like if somebody wanted to start their own credit union, is there software that could work like out of the box, set up and go? Well, yeah, it depends on the context. There's a lot of very expensive, humongous softwares that you can get, and uh, a lot of the older ones are all on mainframe crazy software that so they had built, you know, a million years ago. But uh, there's a company called Vestmark. That's the first thing that comes off the top of my head that does a lot of that setup integration as software very similar to that that you could just, like, get. I don't think it's plug-and-play. A lot of that stuff is definitely not plug-and-play. They Their, their plug-and-play is, like, eight-month integration and setup, you know, kind of thing. They'll say it's one, but it's eight or nine months. And then vest mark, like cool vests, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're probably one of them that does that kind of bigger integrations with that and connects it to the banks. And Would that generally, you think, is that like something that's like $100,000 software or something? Uh, I'd probably say like four, four to five, yeah. Oh. So it would be like kind of just a Pandora's box that you could try to do something with just open source. You know, I don't think so. No. It might be worth it. We're integrating with a lot of bank data there. And it's it's nothing new, right? Like everybody's been doing this kind of integrations and stuff like that for forever. So the main thing being security. The main thing is security. So you're gonna you'd have to plan a very long testing phase because you wanna make sure you caught everything. You wanna you don't wanna be like, Can I see that? No, no, okay, whatever. I'm done with that. Yeah, because you're going to be liable for that, so you need to make sure that your your QA is, is on par, and you need to make sure the people doing the QA are on par. Uh, but outside of that, I don't think it's a big deal. There's companies that that's all they do is try to, is build from their scratch, which basically means they have something they already built and they turn it into the next one. Um, same stuff could be built on .NET, could be built on Java, I mean, or PHP and open source, you know. Uh, and a lot of our stuff, we use Drupal more as a framework than a website. You know, some of the stuff, like just the support one, this is just really just a website. But uh, most of the stuff we build starts with, has a front-end website and an application that does something crazy on the back, you know. And uh, a good example of that is like that, a, you know, AT example I had where they have proposals and PDF outputs, and I can go make my own. PDF and put pages that I feel like the client should see in there and hit print and get my PDF and take the client and then they can log in and see their stuff. So it, it's, it's definitely doable, in, especially in Drupal. It has a really nice framework, has good permission structure, and if you don't like it, you can change it. You know, People will tell you not to add core, but honestly, if you have to for something this big, we typically don't, but you may have to. You know? Especially if you have serious security issues or you need to take something that makes no sense for your application out. That's that's a possibility that you have to look at. Is this a, a module or is this something custom? Uh, we just custom that, I think. It's just like a JavaScript, you know, dragging. Some of the crazy things that, are, that look, look cool on the site, I don't know if they're necessarily our modules for, is that's pretty neat and then you can hit print and it saves this actually in this proposal. So when it comes back, he has this to use or get rid of things or reorder them, you know, and we're, I think, just using kind of like draggable options that are already in Drupal to make that work. And uh, let me look at, we got little pop-ups in case they forget to save because they typically will. Um, let me look at one of these accounts. I don't think you can see them on this yet. So uh, one of the kind of more general things is we use a lot of vertical tabs. So uh, one of the struggles with having that, this much information on anything is that, that there's too much and the client always wants too much, right? And so we typically will roll that all into vertical tabs, which is kind of nice. And then if I go back out to this page, which has got a little bit too much stuff on it, 
uh, one of the things we implemented in was the JavaScript uh, drag and drop. I have to go look and see if this is the right table for that. Uh -oh. There it goes. Uh, let's see if there's actually something I can show you on that. So we added, uh, this is not a view, it looks like a view, but we just wrote basically a table in the module to pull data up. Initially we thought about using views for this, but as you can see, each one of these is a calculated field, and we would have had to put PHP in all those, and instead of just wasting our time with that, let's just put in the module and call it a day. Um, it's just, it's easier. But uh, we added some JavaScript in so that you could show hide fields, which is kind of neat. See everyone always wants that in their views, right? And then draggable saveable. So if I go and I, as my user don't like to see symbol down here and I want it at the end, you know, there's JavaScript actions we put in there and then that saves. So in the cookie, and then basically if I leave this page, I come back, it's still structured this way. It's still with these removed, which is pretty nice. And the user doesn't have to learn how to configure it. They just can do it and it's done. Um, well, there's a lot of that in here and then a lot of like CSV exports and stuff like that. That's a good question. Um, you know, I got to a point where I'm thinking maybe creating a content profile that triggers the like, rule triggers, you know, uh, some field that, that is added or turned on that then you can in your template, you know, use conditional PHP to show fields and not show fields. Yeah, so we had a thing. Uh, we'll basically build fake roles, like in a taxonomy called, you know, awesome guy, guy that sucks guy that should be fired, whatever, you know, so your employees are in there with different permissions, and then we check that based on field outputs or, or permissions, and we build custom permissions in the permissions table. If you haven't done it, it's really easy. Don't be scared. Uh, you just say, this is my new permission in your module, and then you check that permission. And so, so user in a profile. right, and so you can do that, and then basically relate that and say, oh, this is this role. That way you can only have your like eight roles instead of 75 and then manage that craziness. So you can do that and then just check that too while you're in there. And then that gives different permission structures in the same role, which is really nice actually because sometimes that role really has no difference between like the manager and the person. They still just need to see the same stuff. Manager may need to see five extra fields or be able to turn something off or whatever, and that's actually really, really easy to do. So I killed you yet? I think we're almost out of time, so any other questions? Um, so that's basically what you can do, is build your own CRM. You don't have to get too crazy like this. This is totally proof in the pudding. You could build, you know, something that just lists the companies, references those users or people underneath. And you know, and show some stuff out on a page, even as a subdomain. Um, it's really that easy. And then you probably can get away with this being that that smaller customer's CRM system, as well as their website. Uh, use the next customer you've got that needs both as your text case. And you know, you've also got now two things you can sell, not just a website on the front end. You've got. Uh, a whole CRM system you can plug into their website. Anything else? Everybody's tired? Just, just in, since I missed the beginning, the name of this, is this Sugar? or what, what? This is just Drupal. It's just part of Drupal? Yeah. I just had a couple sites out that I have the liberty of showing um, for our kind of walkthrough. This is our unfinished project system for KWall. One of the things we're doing for ourselves is building like we use, everybody uses Basecamp. We have a Basecamp account for some clients. We have an Unfuddle account for some clients, and I hate both of those. 
because it, one base camp doesn't do enough uh, in terms of priority and task listing, and then uh, two on funnel does too much, and then they just forget everything and it all gets lost. And uh, so we're just building our own, and we're going to just kind of mix and match both ideas so that it's a little easier for our clients to manage their tasks and projects. So it's not, it's not a one particular module? Yeah, it's a handful of modules. Yeah. And, but there is a lot of, I think the guy left, but there is a lot of um, CRM projects going on. Although I have really yet to see one that's, that's actually on Drupal.org that's awesome. There's Civi CRM that connects in, but that's really not a thing. And there's one called like Red Hen, I want to say, CRM. That's a module project going on. But I don't think they've got that far. And there's another one called Drop CRM that I don't think has gotten that far. So there's a bunch of people trying to do it. Uh, it's for, if you have a Drupal site already, you probably already have CCK on, you have views on, you have uh, uh, prof user profiles on. You could probably just take that stuff and build your own really quickly or have a developer do it in, in a minimal amount of time. So did you, did you already kind of list the ones that are involved in the, this project that you're using right now? Did you already do uh, yeah, I can kind of go over this really quickly, and basically, um, you know, content access, there's uh, just views, rules, uh, profile, uh, lot, node relationships. This one specifically uses organic groups, and... Uh, Organic groups in its own right has a lot of things going on there. Like you can have a company be an organic group and have users be members of that group, and that could be your company. You know, we built an entire structure for a certain uh, large re religion that basically built their infrastructure out of organic groups. So somebody that's at the bottom uh, in Peru doing some sort of uh, religious thing would be able to report stuff and then that group would be part of this group, part of that group, and you can do stuff like that too with that. It's a really complex system that's, that uh, takes away from the way Drupal works a little bit, but it's really neat. You can do a lot with it. Uh, also in this system there's, uh, you know, calendaring, because we like to see calendars. There's uh, a whole bunch of features we have in our feature set. Backup and migrate is super important. If you guys haven't used that, that's a big part of this. Is Or you could trigger it on your server, but you have sensitive data here, not just somebody's website. You need to back that up all the time and save it somewhere so that in case somebody does go haywire on you, you can go restore that. Or if somebody gets crazy and likes to delete things, that it's being saved. Uh, Homebox. Is that draggable section that I had? So, uh, no, that's that's a straight node. Let me pull that up. I find it. There. Homebox is uh, similar to like the new Drupal dashboard. Except I think it's a, a different module, but it, it works better than the dashboard module that Drupal uses. And I'll show you kind of how that works. It basically takes blocks and then puts them on whatever page you want. So I just created a page called Dashboard. And then it's basically building blocks that puts it into that page. So it's kind of, uh, kind of like context in a way. And then you can put layouts in. And it's pretty neat because you can build like three columns, two columns and then put any blocks you want. So we were building view blocks and then throwing them up into this that come out on that dashboard. And you can put rules in place or change the titles. And uh, you can actually have different role-based blocks, right? So you can restrict a, a block by role and then that comes off of there for the other users. So you can build really like cool configurable dashboards or whatever page you want to put these on. Uh, let's see what else. A lot of mail.
was that time post integration? Uh, we have a, a time post integration where basically we track time through a little widget. This guy called time post. So each one of our projects, we can tell how much time we did. And this allows us from our dashboard to basically post it to the project. So we track our time. It tracks, no, it just tracks, uh, we just have a setup to track specific projects. So I can say I'm working on uh, Super Salad's website and go work on it. Yeah, there are some that do that though, but I don't see, I don't see point because you might be doing something different. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, node blocks, if you don't know what node blocks is, basically it just makes a content type called block or whatever you want to call it and then uses those for blocks. The reason we use that is to uh, add revisions to blocks and then use blocks in the content list and everywhere else. So if you haven't used that, it's kind of different. Some people like it, some don't. But basically, all of us have probably experienced where it's like add block and somebody goes in and adds a bunch of content on the block and then moves it up there and then somehow, you know, changes it and there's no revisions on blocks the way the Drupal structure is. So we use node block, which basically is just a, a node, and then you get a little bit better control over that and revisions. Uh, all other things that are in here would be uh, SWF tools for putting things out in Flash and whatever else. I don't even know what tweak file upload form is, but it's on here. It's so you don't have to click submit. Oh, right. On the upload. As soon as you select the file, it will automatically upload. Open it. And then pretty much all views, and and uh, that's about it. And we just make sure that we're, you know, not turning on things like XML sitemap or, you know, things that may be posting this private data out to the internet. And uh, one of the things we also do with these kind of things is. Uh, we just hard we code in like anonymous user checks and then redirect them to the uh, login access denied page, even though they shouldn't be able to get access to it. Right? I can still do that in my module. It'd be super anal and make anyone that's not logged in go to access denied, and then have the login form on there or whatever we want to do, so that in any case, if somebody comes in and starts playing with permissions, it just doesn't matter. You're not going to get in if you're an anonymous user, right? Because it's not like you're like paranoidly checking your access logs every day and saying, hey, so nobody should have gotten to that page. So we, we're really paranoid and we add things like that into our systems. Anybody else? Thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys.